This month, I took a developer productivity course from everyone's favorite Vim enthusiast, the Primogen. The dev environment that the Primogen uses fascinates me since it's significantly different from my own. As an engineer at Microsoft, I've mostly gravitated towards using Microsoft tools, Windows, VS Code, Visual Studio, GitHub, TypeScript, C Sharp, etc. However, it's important to try new things, especially when you work in the software industry. So I forced myself to use all of the tools mentioned in the course, even if I didn't see an immediate benefit. First off, many of these tools do not offer support for Windows. So before trying anything, I set up Windows Subsystem for Linux, or WSL. This is a feature that allows me to run a Linux environment on my Windows machine without needing a VM. Once I had WSL set up, I started using Tmux. The biggest benefit I've seen is not needing multiple terminals open simultaneously, even when working on several projects at once. For now, I'm still using VS Code and Visual Studio instead of a terminal-based text editor, so the productivity gains are less significant for me than for a hypothetical Vim or Emacs user. Even with this caveat, I've still found this tool to be incredibly useful. Once the key bindings became a habit, I found myself able to switch between screens very quickly and efficiently. Soon, I'm planning to challenge myself to only use Vim for 30 days. I imagine Tmux will become even more of a game changer during that time. The next tool that made working within the terminal much better was the Fuzzy Finder. Especially at my job, where sometimes I need to work within repos that are absurdly large, being able to search for files and directories at any scope made me understand why some developers never leave their terminal. I do wish the key bindings were installed by default since they ended up being the best part of this tool. However, once you find them in the repo, it's not hard to update your shell config. Another interesting tool from the course is Ansible, which is typically used to set up Linux servers. For example, if you have 100 virtual machines, you can use Ansible to run a script that will automate the setup for each. This information came at a great time since I just ditched my 9-year-old MacBook and built a new computer. At the time of watching this course, my dev environment for personal projects had not yet been set up, so I was excited. I spent a few hours putting together an Ansible script that would install my SSH keys, download all the tools needed, and clone all of my repos. However, I ran into a few problems. Number one, I wasn't comfortable storing my private SSH keys in a public repo, even if they are encrypted. While the Primogen states in the course that this is generally safe unless quantum computing advances past projections, AES-256 is said to be likely quantum secure, so at least for the next while, you're going to be safe using this type of encryption. It seems pretty good, uh, and you can store it on public repos. There you go. It's out there. Everything is fine. It's still safer to have separate SSH keys for each device. When you consider that it only takes four commands to generate SSH keys, it's not worth the risk, at least not for me. Number two, I just didn't find the time spent writing the script worth the effort. To be fair, I only have one major personal project, which is my Chrome extension. So for me, it wasn't hard to just install Node and clone the two repos used for my application. I would definitely keep an open mind going forward. Perhaps if my dev environment becomes very complicated in the future, I'll reconsider using Ansible. Overall, I learned a lot by taking this four-hour course. Although I only adopted a handful of the tools discussed, I've gained a much better understanding of the tools that are out there. Thanks for watching and check out this video on the right of me building a scale from scratch.